How's it going everybody? I'm back making another video. For today, um, there's no actual like purpose. I just want to go ahead and uh, show you guys what I've done to the car since I last made a video, which is a couple of things actually. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I did was install the clutch, which is already installed, as well as my lightweight flywheel. I'll show you some pictures. Um, if I, I think I have some, my mechanic showed me some pictures sent me some pictures i also installed um the new steering wheel i got the old one back back over there somewhere i can show you guys how it looked and this is my old steering wheel comparison to my new one there you can see new one and the old one this is where the old one broke it lasted it, it endured four years with me so i have no complaints about this steering wheel i actually pulled on it pretty hard and that's why it broke but I'm really happy because I really like this uh, new steering wheel more than the old one so yeah so the other thing I did was have um, a rear view camera installed um, I didn't know how to do this so I actually had someone uh, install it at a shop but after watching the guy install it I think I could do this in the future it was 70 bucks for the camera and uh, 20 bucks for the labor so I had that done. I had my front window tinted, 43%. Um, um, what else? I uh, installed my Mugen uh, shift knob. Um, what else? So the steering wheel, the clutch, the flywheel, the tint, the shift knob, and the rear view camera. And today, actually, what I'm gonna be doing is finally connecting my AM fuel rail. You can see that right there in the top. Um, I already have the sensor connected to the exhaust. All I'm missing, I was missing the um, power cable. I bought it used, and the person didn't sell uh, didn't sell the the wideband with this cable. So I ordered this. I just got it a couple of uh, two weeks ago, but I, ha I hadn't had the time to install it. So I'm gonna be installing this, um, and I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do it, just in case you guys want to do it as well. So as I was saying, I already have the sensor installed, so I won't be going over that in, that in this video. All I'm going to be doing is actually going ahead and installing um, the power cable, as I said. So, first thing I'm going to do is, uh, already did it. First thing, I, I removed um, both uh, covers from the, from the uh, steering column down here. I removed those. I'm going to be tapping into the fuse box that is inside of... Um, right next to right there I think you can see it yeah right there me tapping into that fuse box uh, right now right so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using I'm gonna, I'm gonna be tapping into this fuse right here this is supposed to be the alternator fuse the reason I want to use this fuse is it's because it only uh, give it only has power when you turn on uh, the accessory when you have your car running so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull this out and I'm going to use this add a circuit um, to place my cable for the wideband. All right, so the AM power cable comes with four wires. Um, the blue and the white, I'll explain later what they're for. I'm only going to be using, um, basically they're for data logging. And basically I'm just going to be using the power, which is the red one, and then the black, which is the ground. So I'm going to be connecting the red wire to um, this add a circuit uh, by removing the fuse I just mentioned. Now for my specific case, which is an Acura RSX, you have to have the ATM model of the add a circuit in order to do this. I'm going to right now. So the old fuse is right there. It's actually good, but I bought uh, two new um, fuses. So I'm going to go ahead and use these fuses with my new add a circuit. So I'm just um, gonna be um, placing my new fuses inside these, and these are four holes where the fuses go inside, where the fuses go into. It's gonna be, kinda, it's kinda hard, but it's kinda snug, but yeah. All right, so I just, um, I just install, installed my two new fuses inside the add a circuit and placed the add a circuit uh, fuse tips to where the old uh, ten, uh, fuse to where the old fuse was so it's, it's snug in there it's installed now I'm gonna be running the wire through here 
Oh, I just removed my gauge pod. This is my wideband. I already connected the power cable to its slot. Now I'm gonna be running um, the cable down through where I also ran the um, sensor cable. And I removed this plastic piece right here. I'm gonna be running it through there as well to ensure that it's all properly set. Okay, so I wanna show you guys where I ran the wire through. So basically the, the wire is Wait, this this uh this new one and it's i ran it through there like my oh my like my wide band sensor and then i just uh, maneuvered it through there i took out this um where you have your um your uh sunroof uh, fog light and cruise control as well as side mirrors controls it's just with a flathead screwdriver and i removed these um this, these are set these tabs right here and then I just ran the wire through there and under here and now I have the connector right here all right guys so my bad I was uh, just taking, taking care of the cables as I said um, I connected the power one to the alternator fuse and you can see that connection right here I inserted uh, the uh, wideband power cable to the uh add a add a circuit i pressed on this blue plastic piece right here so the so the cable doesn't come out then uh, i started looking for a ground and i found one right here right next to the obd obd2 uh, computer scanner so around the black wire around this bolt um and as you can see this is the metal of metal there's no paint here so this is a good ground i don't, i really don't know much about um circuits and electricity or electrical components but I did my best I asked my dad and I think I did a pretty good job and um, yeah it, it's working as, as I said it's power for when the ignition is on so right now as you can see the wideband is off once I turn the key Testing. the wideband comes on now obviously since the car is uh, in the off position it's not turned on that's the um, reading right there so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and just um, make sure to um, properly run those wires. And then I actually removed, um, I was gonna place my wide band one, but I prefer on the middle one. So now I'm gonna go ahead and um, return my uh, my other uh, gauge, which, which actually doesn't work, but I'm just gonna go ahead and run it anyways and put it through there. So it doesn't look with that gap. I really don't like that gap, but um, yeah, let's go. Well guys, I just turned my car on and the wide band is, I think it's working. It's reading. Um, it's still, uh, my car is still warming up, so I'm thinking that's still not the, the accurate um, calibration. I also think these have to be calibrated, so as for right now, I'm not sure how to calibrate it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and Google that and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, you know get educated on how you sh you're supposed to calibrate these and yeah but i mean i'm really happy um i still don't know if i like it on the second pod i may just switch it over to the first pod or maybe just to the third because right here is where i normally uh look down um and i have a pretty easy view of the wide band but i'm not sure yet um i'll just go ahead and test it for about two or three days and see how i like it and if I don't like the position, then I'm gonna go ahead and change it to the uh, one, other, one of the other pods. So I think we're done here, guys. So, so I actually got home and I just realized <clears throat> that I never showed you guys my new shift knob, my new Mugen, or Mugen, whatever shift knob. My old one was in pretty bad shape. I'm gonna just come so you guys can see the comparison. The, this was my old shift knob. I mean it was it was really bad already so that's why I bought the new one and I really like the red uh, carbon fiber look on this also I never showed you guys how my rear view camera looks so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you guys right now the, the guy tapped into my uh, reverse lights so once I put my car in reverse the camera comes on now the only problem with the camera is right now it's facing a little bit down so what i see 
is um, I have a pretty good view, but I'm looking more um, I'm, more, I'm, I'm looking more into the ground rather than behind me. So I'm gonna have to uh, maybe readjust a little bit the camera. It obviously doesn't have trajectory, of course, but the camera itself is pretty high quality. I really like the image it gives out, um, and I'm happy with it. I just remember that I never showed you guys what the rear view camera looked like, so I just wanted to show you guys what it was like. And once I take it off reverse, it just goes back to my um, regular menu. So, yeah. So guys, this is the um, wide band right now working. Obviously, I am uh, kind of like coasting, so it doesn't read anything once I uh, on it and immediately uh, starts giving me my readout. Uh, right now I'm just going downhill so that's why I'm not giving it any gas. But right now I'm going to give it some gas so that you can see it. That is my third gear.